Welcome to Going Carnivore in Thailand. It's Mark here in the pool. Did my exercise. Just about ready to get out. It is a gorgeous morning. Well, Alexa was wrong. I said, is it going to rain? She said there's a 51% chance about 15 minutes ago. No chance right now. I mean, the sky is beautiful. A couple puffy clouds around, but they don't look like they have any rain in store for us. All right. Now, as far as going carnivore here, some of the comments keep saying to tell you all, how did I end up in Thailand? Well, in a word, YouTube videos. Now, there's a couple videos on my other channel where I go in great depth of how I ended up in Thailand. But to be honest, when uh, January 21st of 2020, one day after Joe Biden took office, I saw the writing in the tea leaves after about the 40th executive order that made no sense whatsoever, shutting down the Keystone pipeline. Yeah, I mean, just order after order that, that made no sense and it seemed like if somebody wanted to screw things up, that's exactly what you do to screw things up, not help things. So I said, to hell with it. I'm selling everything I own. Well, that was nice of the little fly laying on my nose. Why don't you? Uh, I'm selling everything I own. And I'm getting out of Dodge. Well, that is bigger adventure than it seems. And the first thing I said was, I don't want to live in the United States anymore. So I have to go where I'm treated best. And one of the things that concerned me was the fact that you don't even own your United States passport. If the United States says your passport's no good, you can't go anywhere. Not a country in the world will take you in. You'd have to, you'd have to walk across the border into any country violating their laws because without a passport, you can't go anywhere. So what did I do? I decided to get a citizenship by investment from an island in the Caribbean called St. Lucia, beautiful island. And it took about six months total. And I ended up getting citizenship. Now, you can't do this unless you have a spotless criminal record. And uh, they investigate you 18 ways from Sunday. And the packet of information I had to send was like that thick. And uh, $130,000 later, I had my second citizenship. Now, have I used it? Not really. It wasn't intended to be something as a plan A. It was a plan B. It was in case. Well, things are just getting crazier over there in the United States. And plan B is getting closer to plan A, but it's not here yet. So anyway, I started watching YouTube videos. That's how I ended up here. But in reality, I created a list of 40 plus, a little bit more than 40 places in the world that I would be interested in going to. Things that totally interest me. But I followed a guy over here who I come to get to know. His name was Chris Parker from a wonderful channel called Retired Working For You. And uh, 
he's a hell of a YouTube maker. I mean, he puts a lot of work into it. And he comes from the film industry and from from editing in Hollywood. So this guy, he has some fabulous channels. And he kept showing Thailand. Well, I wasn't going to Thailand because by the time I got everything done and was ready to leave the United States, it was July of 2022. And remember, I started this in January 2020. Well, there was a lot of things that slowed me down, but get rid of everything that you own is, is a job, especially if you were materialistic and you accumulated a lot of stuff. Well, I wanted to totally leave, and I can honestly say that there's only about three things that are in the United States that are of interest to me. Uh that I left with a friend. Other than that, I've divorced myself of all the materialistic things. I rent this pool villa. I don't own it. Don't want to own it. Why do you want to own when you can rent? I want to be free. I want my freedom. That's what I want. That's why I'm divorcing myself for the U.S. fiat system, the U.S. dollar and the U.S. banking system. I keep as little amount of money as I can in actual banking, checking, or savings account. Little bit as money as I possibly can. Rest of it, Bitcoin, baby. The Bitcoin standard. The U.S. dollar has lost 20% of its purchasing power in the last four years. If you had a million dollars four years ago, it will buy $800,000 worth of stuff compared four years ago, where a million would buy. That's all you could get is 800000 worth. 20% less purchasing power. The price of beef in the United States, according to most estimates, has tripled in the last four years. Triple for the price of a steak. And this is going carnivore in Thailand. Okay, It hasn't tripled everywhere. It hasn't tripled in Thailand, where I'm getting two-inch thick ribeyes delivered for $5.60 a pound shrink-wrapped, vacuum-sealed, frozen to my door, delivered. Place your order on Facebook. <laughs> Believe it or not, go straight to the farm. They butcher it. They send it. It's fantastic. Hasn't, hasn't went up that much here. But in Bitcoin terms, if you think about it, from four years ago, it's really dropped. Anyway, I, I, I digress. People said, how did I get here? Well, I was ready to go somewhere else. And then at the end of the pan situation, pandemic, at the end of that, I got a notice that Thailand was opening up Come on in, starting July 1st on 2022. No more pre-test COVID screening. No more sticking something up your nose when you got there. No more having to go to a hotel and spending time at a hotel in quarantine after you arrive. All that stuff was going to be put on the shelf. So I decided to hang around the United States three more weeks and then fly to Thailand to check it out. I am so thankful that I did. My life is so much better over here than it was over there. I came that close between 2020 and 2022 to buying a pool villa in Florida. I had one near Bonita Springs, 
It was gorgeous. I actually may have bid on it. Somebody outbid me because this was during the pandemic and people were moving to Florida. And thank the Lord they outbid me and they took that because property taxes have went through the roof. Insurances went through the roof. Car insurances went through the roof. People were complaining that car insurance is up like 20 something percent. It was expensive. I've got a Mazda CX-30 in the garage right behind me, 2021 model. They insure the car over here in Thailand, not the driver. They don't care who the driver is. If the driver's got a license, they can drive my car. I've got full coverage from the insurance company. And yes, I've already had to collect a little bit because a rock came and busted the window like two weeks after I had it. A rock flew off the highway, hit the window, and just cracked it instantly. And they paid, no problem, I didn't pay a penny. They put a new windshield in, came to my condo to put it in. So the insurance is good. You know what it cost me? Total full coverage for a 2021 vehicle. I pay $430 US per year. Not per month, guys. Not per quarter. Per year. And I've got friends of mine now, even I forget how much my insurance actually was costing me when I left the United States. But I'm confident now that from what people were telling me, I'd probably be paying a couple thousand a year. And I haven't had a accident against me since I was 18 years old. That was the last time I had an accident. And uh, that was a funny story. I had a car and I was going down this street in Cincinnati. And I seen this good looking blind girl walk on the other side of the street. And this is a four lane highway, two on each side. So I go, I turn my head, hey baby. You know, I was like 18. Hey! And this idiot in front of me slammed on the brakes because that light turned red. And I hit him without even touching my brake. I didn't even have a clue. Well, this guy came out of the car and I, he had blood in his eyes. He was going to kill me. I'm telling you, he got out and said, what in the world are you do it. And then I saw why he was so mad. He still had the window sticker on his car. And his wife got out of the car and she's yelling, we only picked the car up from Bennett Ford, which was like a mile and a half up the road. So they had picked up their new Maverick. It was, a, it was, I think a Maverick is what they were calling it back then. And they had driven it a mile and a half, and I just pushed their trunk into their back seat. <laughs> I mean, it folded that thing up, and it destroyed the car I was driving. It just literally screwed the heck out of the car I was driving, which was a tank and ugly and it wasn't any good. And that's the last accident I had at 18. Anyway, funny story there. Yeah. Uh, mile and a half. Yeah. That's when you're having a bad day. Bad day. So anyway. That's how I ended up. I missed that deal in Florida. I didn't get the, that beautiful... Yeah, I bid like $900,000 on that house. And uh, from everything I could tell right now, people were leaving Florida and by the truckload unless they have boo bucks. And, you know, I'm fun employed now. 
I don't have that big income coming in. I, I'm I'm a retiree living on a Bitcoin standard. Now, if Bitcoin doubles or triples in the next 12 to 18 months, I'll be happy. Yeah, because as the U.S. dollar, they keep spending. They keep spending and they have to borrow money with U.S. Treasury bonds, increasing the national debt. But more importantly, they're sitting, the Fed's sitting there with its finger on the button to stimulate the economy if it goes down, hold the economy down with all their phony interest rate manipulations. You know, I'll tell you where we, we, we really went wrong in 2008 by not letting some investors go belly up. We, we needed to quit bailing stuff out. About the only thing I agree with was helping out the auto industry in 2008 because they just employ so many people. But these bankers that caused this problem, the bankers that decided it was a good idea to go out and loan people who couldn't afford the house, the money to buy the house with no money down and you know, super low interest and all this stuff. And then they couldn't pay. Then they bundle, they bundle all these mortgages up and they sell them to suckers in the stock market. Nobody, nobody who caused all that problem suffered. Maybe the people who lost their job at Lehman Brothers. But for the most part, they just bailed it out. Well, the U.S. dollar is going to bail itself out some more. And, and it's going to lose more and more purchasing power. And people are going to flock and run to Bitcoin. If they get any sense. Because they can't print more Bitcoin. There will never be more than 21 million. And they already got well over 19 million mined. And it's going to take another 120 years to mine the rest of it because it's all done programmatically. You see, if the price of gold goes up, people go out and they dig deeper and find more gold. Well, then they have more gold on the market, so the price comes down. If the price of the hardest asset in the world, Bitcoin, goes up, they're only going to be able to find another 450 Bitcoin per day for the next four years. Adding to 19 million. That's very, 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 very small amount of increase in supply. So as demand grows, because if you put, if you lit, if you leave your money in fiat US dollars, and you buy 90-day U.S. Treasuries, and you're getting about 5% on. You're losing 7% a year on your money. If nothing else happens, that's without. That's just standard. The cost. The cost is eating you up. Now. If you want to put it in the stock market, you might do better. If you want to put it all in the stock market, you might do better. But that game of musical chairs, that melt up. Yeah, you know, the only reason the stock market's going up is because the value of the U.S. dollars going down. Do you think that... Uh, do you, do you really think that, that some of these companies are worth that much more money than they were two years ago? Some of the companies in the stock market go up in values just because the dollar's going down purchasing power. So people who hold a stock of, you know, Clorox, you know, maybe it was worth 
$40 a share or whatever it's going for. Now they they want more money for it because their stakes went up 300%. So money just keeps coming in. And if you want Clorox, you're going to spend more money for Clorox. It's not really the company's making that much more money. They're making money. They ain't making that much more. Yeah, you know, the everything's inflationary. It's a it's a system built on debt. They borrow the money into existence. It's fractional reserve banking. And by keeping your money away from the banks, you're actually helping to lower fractional reserve lending. Because if you put ten thousand dollars in the bank, They'll loan that $10,000 out to four or five other people, 10000 each. Well, they loan the first one like 9500 and they loan the second one like 9000 and the third one might get 8700 or something like that. But fractional reserve banking, these banks, they take your deposit and then they lend it four times, lend it five times. I've got videos on explaining exactly how fractional reserve banking has been going on since the 1600s. It's four times more responsible for inflation than the Fed. The, the federal government overspends. The gross domestic product's too high. I mean, they say, oh, America's GDP is growing. Yeah, well... The federal government borrowed $3 trillion to throw into the economy, and then they count that as the economy growing. They borrowed the money to spend in the economy and say, look how good the economy is doing. All these companies sold all this stuff, and all these people made all this money that the federal government borrowed and spent. If you took out federal deficit spending, from the U.S. economy, we'd be in a recession. Our economy is not growing. And let me, let me clue you on something. That's the same for China. It's the same for Japan. They just don't have the world reserve currency printer that the Federal Reserve does. It's the reason why the biggest real estate collapse in the history of the world is going on in China right now. So, I don't know. I'm into, I'm into geoeconomics. And I can tell you this right now. If you're close to my age and you're thinking about retiring and you're worried about Hey, do I really have enough money to retire? Do I really? Well, if you're, if you're thinking like that, then you ought to be thinking, Hey, I don't know if I've got enough money to retire because of inflation. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. I saw a man retired the year I was born. He lived for another 40 years. 1955, you could go buy a brand new Chevrolet for $2,000. By the time he died in 95, probably the cheapest Chevrolet was 18000 or 15000 You know, I mean, here's a guy who said he had enough to retire on who owned a butcher shop. And he had to live 40 years and go through inflation uh, during the 80s when it, where the interest rates went up to 18, 19%. So there's people out there who are worried about retiring. Well, think about part of your plan is Get away from the depreciating 
U.S. dollar that's being debased on purpose. They're trying to inflate our debt away. Get away from that and think about whether or not there's someplace else in the world that you might like to hang your hat for a little while that doesn't cost as much to live. Let me tell you, this pool villa right here in Florida would cost me at least four to five times more money to live in every month. I'm serious. Four to five times for sure. Guaranteed. No way you're going to find Villa this nice for $1,900 a month to rent. Furnished and full of everything. I mean, there's nothing lacking here. Nothing. So, this is a longer video. But if you want to go carnivore, perhaps going carnivore somewhere else might be less expensive. Otherwise, eat hamburger. That's always the least expensive cut, isn't it? Thanks for watching. Bye. That's all, folks.